Hey guys and girls, um, today we are going to take a regular Xbox One controller, actually my day one edition controller, and we are going to turn this controller into one of these controllers, my Elite controller. We are going to do some uh, modifications to the controller, uh, some of which will void the warranty. So uh, again, if you're going to uh, attempt this at home, it is at your own risk. I cannot claim any responsibility for any damaged pieces. Um, let's start by taking a look at the Elite controller. Um, now we, we all know the Elite controller is pretty awesome. It's got uh, the two modes where you can actually set the buttons up uh, in two different ways. Um, you can actually uh, remove the buttons here, the directional pad here, um, and of course uh, you on the back you have your adjustable uh, triggers. Uh, so this will be a longer trigger pull. This would be the shorter trigger pull uh, for those uh, really fast-paced first-person shooters. Uh, and then, of course, you have these back buttons here, which you can take off and remove. Um, see, the controller feels really nice in the hand. I love how it feels. Uh, very good grip, ergonomics, uh, fantastic. Uh, the thing about this controller that I don't like is how easy these buttons uh, click on the back. Um, to each their own. Some people really enjoy it. Uh, I myself enjoy a controller that has a little bit more, uh, uh, may take a little bit more to push those buttons. I don't know how many times I've just sat this controller in my hands and by accident hit a, hit a button. Um, so I'm hoping to remedy that today. Uh, I do love this controller and I will continue to use this controller, but I just kind of had an itch to uh, modify this controller. And what I'm going to show you today is how to do that. A um, couple little pieces that you are going to need in order to make this happen. Um, I used the, uh, or we will be using, the Collective Minds trigger grips. Uh, these trigger grips are actually modified uh, to stop the pull on the trigger and you could adjust it to be tighter. Um, it, meaning stopping quicker or of course the typical regular trigger pull. Um, and then this particular <clears throat> trigger grip comes with these button attachments uh, that you can actually push onto your controller to make the thumbsticks stick up higher from the controller. I am not a huge fan of these uh, as it's kind of a pain to put them on. You have to like push them down onto the controller and like, wiggle, wiggle them around a little bit uh, to make them stick. We're going to remedy that today with something else. Also, um, and this, this kit here, by the way, costs about uh, 20, 15 to 20 dollars on, on Amazon. Um, we are going to also put in uh, this strike pack, uh, Collective Mind strike pack. Um, it actually adds those, uh, those buttons to the back of the controller. Um, and it's actually a pretty neat little device. Uh, you can actually um, uh, sync these buttons to the, any one of the face buttons that you'd like, uh, such as you know the, the A, the X, the Y, and the B. Um, and you can adjust whichever ones. Maybe you don't necessarily want to use the uh, Y button, you just want to use the X to reload or the A to jump. Uh, you can sync those just by simply pushing a button here and then pressing the button on the front of the controller. And I'll show you how to do that later on. Um, the only part about that this piece that uh, is something to note is it turns your controller into a wired controller. Um, for those of you that are hardcore gamers, maybe not such a big deal. Uh, less latency with the uh, controller being wired than you would with a wireless controller, even though the latency, latency is almost non-existent uh, in a wireless Xbox One controller. And then the last piece we'll be talking about today, uh, of course, is this. Uh, order these online. Oh, by the way, sorry, this piece here is $49.99 on Amazon. Um, this piece here <clears throat> is the magnetic parts that you would normally have for your uh, for your Elite controller. So these are like replacement parts, but you can add them into your uh, existing controller, such as the directional pad. So this would be replacing the directional pad in your Xbox One controller, uh, giving you the ability to put these extended grips, or of course you could still do your um, standard lower grips there too. Uh, the concaved versus the convexed, if you like that. Um, and these pieces here, 
uh, we'll take apart the controller, and I'll show you that in a moment, to replace these. This kit here will void the warranty of your existing Xbox One controller. So uh, just uh, to let you know ahead of time before you try to do this mod at home, um, that this will void the warranty of this controller. These other two pieces, uh, I'm not so sure they do uh, void the warranty, but I know for sure that this will damage a sticker that is on your Xbox One controller, rendering it non-returnable or non-fixable um, if you were to have a, a, like, like a warranty on it or anything like that. Um, so, so let's get started. Uh, the tools you're going to need for this are a typical... Um, like if you have one of these screwdrivers uh, with it's a Torx 8 security screw so you'll see right there there's that little uh, indentation on the bottom of the Torx screw um, this is my uh, special kit that I use but you could pick these up um, a simple kit like this uh, with a couple of attachments or whatnot um, at Harbor Freight they carry a lot of the tools there as well um, and you will be also in need of a plastic pry tool or uh, otherwise known as a spudger. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the uh, regular controller. Uh, first things first, what we are going to have to do is replace these pieces. These are, or we'll take these pieces off, which are uh, replaceable. We have the trigger stop grips here, um, the Collective Mind trigger stop grips that we'll be replacing that with after we replace the magnetic parts. So first things first, um, what you're going to do uh, by taking these parts off, you have to kind of get a little bit of a grip here on the edge of the controller near the button, and you just kind of pry a little bit. You can actually just put this right down here, and if I push down, you can kind of hear it prying away from the controller. All right, so uh, I'm going to take the plastic pry tool. You can see I kind of pulled it apart a little bit here, and I'm going to pull with my fingers. And it kind of just comes off uh, like this. Sometimes a little harder than others. Depends on the, pl the pliability that you're putting onto the controller. Um, I had to cut there for a second because I was having some troubles doing it with the camera in front of my face. Uh, but I'm able to take both of these off. And you can see the clips are still intact. It will make some loud noises as you do it. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right. So... Um, let's take off the battery cover as well. Now, as you can tell, I have never taken this controller apart. Let me just fix the focus here. I have never taken this controller apart um, before, except for taking off these trigger grips here and actually changed the grips uh, to the uh, grips that we're going to be changing it to today because I was too excited. I wanted to try it before I did this. Um, but as you can tell here, I have not done anything to this sticker. But if I just move the sticker a little bit and I push down right here, you're going to see that there is an indentation right there. That indentation is one of the, one of the five screws that we're going to take off of this controller. Um, once I puncture this screw here, uh, I will be voiding the warranty of my controller. Now, um, I am very far out of date. On this one of 2013, it is now 2016 um, when I'm doing this modification. So I'm just going to push inside of that and I caught the screw and I'm just going to unscrew it. Now, uh, what kind of caused me to uh, try this mod um, was uh, I wanted uh, an Elite controller and I couldn't find the Elite controller anywhere. So I looked for alternatives and I was able to find some of these parts on Amazon and I decided to give it a shot and see how well it worked for me. Um, so we, we've undone this screw in the middle. We have to undo this screw here uh, and a screw that's located right here in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that in the light right here in the bottom. Um, another one right here and another one right here. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. Um, so yeah, so I really wanted an altern I wanted an alternative. I wanted to be able to get the Elite controller. Unfortunately, uh, when it first came out, uh, I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, the controller was expensive. It was 150 bucks, and it was just like, wow, man, am I going to drop another 150 bucks on another controller, or would I rather spend 150 bucks on some games um, or content for my my system? Um, so I saw some of these parts. Um, Basically, this mod is um, for use with an existing controller that you already have. You don't have to go out and buy an Elite controller, even though the Elite controllers are pretty awesome. 
but this is a good alternative for you if you're looking for a project. Uh, something to do with your time and you like uh, doing things like this. Um, all right, so I'm just going to lift this back piece off and I'm leaving the screws in place. I'm not actually flipping it over. I don't want to lose any of those screws. Um, and I'm just going to set this back piece aside for a second there. And you can see here that this, uh, now you can see the whole back of the, of the controller. And all I'm going to do right now is just flip this over and I should just be able to lift the plate, this front plate, right off of the top of my controller. Now another reason why I decided to do this modification as well is because I have a PlayStation 4. And as we all know, the PlayStation 4 thumb pads are probably some of the worst thumb pads you've ever used on a console. Um, not that they're super bad, they just wear down really easily. Um, and I really like the feeling of these thumb pads, so in another video um, I'm going to be uh, modifying a PlayStation 4 controller by replacing the thumb pads uh, to a, an actual um, PlayStation 4 controller. So what I am doing right now is I'm just going to grab my Harbor Freight um, screwdriver and I'm going to grab a couple of parts here and all I'm going to do, I want to pry the um, a piece off of this controller and I'll show you what piece that is. So right here is a directional pad and in order for us to replace that with the magnetic pad, we actually have to uh, release these clips here on the side. So I have this little pry tool and all I'm going to do is just lift up here on the bottom a little bit. And again, I've never done this before. This is my first time. So um, if you do, <laughs> please be easy on me in the comments. Uh, if you do see uh, a mistake that I make on here, uh, take it easy on me. All right. It's my first time doing this. So all right, we'll take this up right here. Hopefully I can get that back into place and I'm just going to set that aside. Now right here is my directional pad, and my directional pad seemed to have come out pretty okay and pretty easy. I didn't really need to pry anything here, it just comes directly up. And what I'm going to do with this is actually I'm going to replace my directional pad with this. So I'm going to be placing my directional pad here onto the controller and see if I can get that to fit. That does look okay, um, however, let me just take a quick look here, and we want to match up. You can see there's a little bit of a shape here, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, and there's a shape there, so I'm going to try to match that shape. I'm just going to place that down, that doesn't seem to fit, let's see where is that short piece, there, does that work? Yeah, that's the one right there, that looks like it's going to be it. So we are going to... Just lay that into place like this. Now that that's in place, I'm going to take this metal piece again, and I'm going to tuck that. I believe it goes underneath, or does it go over the top? Oh, over the top, perfect. And I'm going to clip that back into place. So now that directional pad is replaced. So that's the first part of our modification done, is putting that pad back into place. Next is to remove these thumb pads. So this thumb pad, very simply, just a little piece on the bottom, just sits right on and just gets pushed into place. So I'm going to keep this thumb pad because I'm going to use this for another replacement in a different video. And I'm going to take the other one off here as well. In the meantime, I'm going to take the new magnetic thumb pads, which is pretty cool because I think if I can do it to this controller, I might do another video where I do it to my Wii U controller as well. I'm just going to push that into place like this. And all I'm doing, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is taking this and I'm lining it up. So you can see it's kind of like an angled piece here and it fits specifically onto this piece here. So again, that angled piece goes up and down. And I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it right on top and just put a pressure on the back because I don't want to hurt the board either. I'm going to push it right into place. And that's it. So that is my modification. Now let's put it, this controller back together and see what I get. So we're going to do it step by step. We're going to take the front plate. Again, there's my front plate. And I'm just going to try to set it 
on top here. If I can find where it is, there it is. Boom, flat on top. Perfect. I am then going to flip it over. And I'm going to take my back piece here with my screws in it. And I'm going to lightly put it into place. So let's see if I can find how this goes here. I want to make sure there's no problems with the triggers when I put this back into place. It looks like it's pretty well falling into place there. Let me just pick this up. Oop, I lost one of the screws there. Not a big deal. All right. So that is not all the way in. It looks like you got to try to push that trigger down just a hair. Oh, there it is. That's why. I actually have to do it from the top. So I actually have to... Uh, Looks like I have to kind of, you know what, I'm going to take the screws out. Apologies. Thought maybe I would have been able to do that. Doesn't look like I could. Um, so it does look like I have to just kind of go in a little bit on an angle here, maybe. Because it looks like there's a clip on the top. Might have to fight with this a little bit off camera. Again, I'm doing this through a... Well, right now my camera's broken, so I'm doing it through my cell phone, or one of my cell phones. Um, and it doesn't look like it's clipping it into place right there, but it does look like it's getting together on the bottom. Um, as you can see right here, there's, a, there's some pieces sticking out, so I'm just trying to get those pieces into place. So let me see if I can do that by pulling this off again. Let's see, I don't remember if that was underneath. Oh. What's the worst that can happen, right? Let me see that battery cover. Uh, no, that actually looks fine. All right, so now what I'm going to do is actually, oops, totally hit that. I am just going to screw in this metal, this metal piece here, right to the center. I'll tighten that up. Have another screw here, tighten that up. I can get in the hole there. There we go. So hopefully when you guys get a chance to try this at home, uh, it goes pretty easy uh, for you. This, this modification I thought was going to be a little bit harder than it turned out. Um, not so bad. Uh, next time I think I'll do some better lighting as well. Let me see if I can show you where this other screw goes here. So right here in the tip of the controller is where that screw kind of just goes in. And you just have to screw it in. So I don't know if I did a good enough job there for you guys to see that. Hopefully I did. Um, and I'm sure there's millions of videos online to show you how to take apart a controller. So if you do decide to do this modification, um, then you'll know how to do that or find some of your resources there. Uh, put this in here. I'm really excited about doing this one because I, I like my day one controller. I just uh, I like using it. It feels good to me. Oh, this is going to be neat. This is going to be really cool. All right. So I got all my all four of my screws in place. Oops, knocking some stuff around here. Um, <clears throat> so again. Uh, with some of these modifications, again, the modification we just did by putting in these uh, thumb pads, these magnetic thumb pads, actually will void the warranty of your controller. Um, and I can... That's neat. Uh, so now my day one controller is basically an elite. Um, but we're not done yet. We have a couple more things to do. Now, I'm going to put my trigger trigger frames on. And the way these trigger frames work, um, inside the box, inside of this trigger frame box, trigger grips from Collective Minds. Again, Collective Minds, uh, just so I could let you guys know, they didn't pay me for this video. I'm doing this completely on my own. Um, I am not receiving any royalties for this at all. Uh, this is bought with my own money, so these are all my opinions. Um, so uh, I just wanted to give you that disclaimer. I forgot to do that in the beginning. But these trigger grips are very easy to put on. All I had to do was take off my old trigger grips by uh, spudging them off the side with my plastic prying tool. Plastic prying tool, not my plastic. <laughs> and then I'm going to take it like this, just put it into place here, and all I'm going to do is click it. 
and now that's in place. The cool part about these grips is they are grippy. They have a rubber as opposed to plastic. So it actually gives you a little bit of grip on your controller, which is great. Um, again, the only downfall that I had to this grip uh, when I put it on uh, before was certain games. Uh, one game uh, comes to mind, uh, which is uh, Destiny. Um, you'll see here when I push down, it does automatically lessen my trigger pull. And I can actually lessen it even more so it's even touchier than that or bring the bring this down more. Um, so I don't know if I have to just adjust these. I have tried adjusting it before and it didn't seem to fix the problem, but if I'm on my uh, on my bike trying to go somewhere in Destiny, um, if, I, if I'm pulling on my trigger here, uh, my bike doesn't seem to really go anywhere. Um, so I just have to either um, take this piece off if I don't want to use it and put on the old trigger grip, um, this one here, or I can just keep pulling the trigger like this and my bike just kind of goes but it's more of an inconsistent movement so I don't really like all that that much um, now one last piece you can do this if you'd like to or if you don't again uh, the thing I loved about my elite controller uh, is the grip and how it feels but the thing that always bothered me was just by me holding it you can hear it maybe that all I have to do is just tap this button here and this and it's moving. It's actually doing whatever these buttons do. Um, and instead of doing that mid-game and making a mistake, um, I like a harder button. So um, I had purchased this piece here, which is the Collective Minds um, Strike Pack, which is actually pretty neat because you can do um, presets um, and you can also put different presets. So you, I believe you could do up to four or eight different presets on this a particular piece. I haven't done any more than just one before, but according to the directions, you can do a whole bunch. Um, so, if so if you have specific games that you like to play, you can actually move that along to, to, to work with those. Uh, this particular mod will actually force your controller to become a uh, <clears throat> excuse me wired controller. And all you'd have to do is just plug it in just like you would if uh, it was your battery cover. So you slip it in there, and then here on the top of the controller is your power plug and you plug that in there and then you would just plug your regular power cable here and now your controller awesome now your controller is one step closer to being an elite controller so let's just recap what we did today we have replaced our stock trigger frame which would be these stock trigger frames with a uh, gripped trigger frame which allows our trigger to be adjusted uh, for short trigger pull. We've also added on back buttons which we can uh, adjust to any one of our face keys. We've also replaced our thumb pad and our directional pad with the Xbox Elite Controller magnetic pads. Um, the magnetic pads I was able to get online on eBay for about $19. Um, you could probably find that. And what I'll try to do is put a list of everything that I used in this mod in the description below. I really appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out what we were doing today. I uh, can't wait to start playing with this bad boy. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, please, uh, if you want to leave a comment uh, below, uh, that'd be great. Please keep them <laughs> Uh, again, please be easy on me. Uh, uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, rate, comment, and subscribe uh, if you enjoyed it, and I will love to do more videos um, in the future. Again, keep an eye out for the PlayStation 4 modification um, where I change my PlayStation 4 thumb pads for these Xbox uh, thumb pads. Um, and who knows, maybe in the future, maybe I'll try to put these on. Uh, PlayStation 4 or Wii controller. Guys, again, thanks so very much for stopping by and checking out how you can make yourself an Xbox Elite controller without spending 150 bucks. See you later, guys. Thanks a lot.